This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing a very shady and sketchy perfume, if you may. One of history's most shadiest perfume releases ever. So it's going to be juicy, fun, and tea shall be spilled. We will be reviewing Guerlain's Liu. Or Liu de Guerlain. Let me zoom this in so you get to see it really close up. Because a lot of people ask me, how do you spell the name? Let me move the whole, okay. L-I-U. The little tiny, tiny name in the middle. It's almost as if Guerlain was embarrassed <laughs> of the name of the perfume. They're making it as small as possible so that it's like, well, well you're selling a Guerlain perfume? What is it? You, you, you know, like, say it fast and shush about it. So uh, why is it shady and sketchy? Well, because this is history's better or worse sister slash clone slash dupe slash copy slash homage you pick an adjective of this baby here chanel number no. five so i thought to myself what better tent to review you than for the hundredth anniversary of chanel number no. five the shadiness comes because, let's face it, you guys, the 100th anniversary plastic bottle collection of products that Chanel has released to celebrate Chanel number no. 5 is beyond ridiculous and sad. So, I prefer to give my money to Guerlain to celebrate this baby's birthday. A little bit twisted, a little bit shady, you might even say. But you know what? highly necessary in this day and age to call these brands out when they make mistakes. So if you like this video thus far, thumb it up, show the YouTube algorithm that we're doing something right here, and uh, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. You can also push the join button next to the subscription button and become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, become a patron today and gain access to extra perks. And thank you to all my members and patrons who have already pledged. You guys are awesome! And also, this video is being filmed live in front of a virtual audience. So thank you to all my co-chatters and co-reviewers who are in the chats, on the chat bar right next to me. I film live streams every Saturday. So if you wish to partake in one of these filmings together with me, join me every Saturday and you will be part of my virtual audience as well. Let me even spray towards the spotlight so you see even more. Check out the gorgeousness of the fumes. Okay, so Liu is majestic. <laughs> I can already tell. There is a smell of hay in there. It's sexual. The aldehydes are blooming. There's real oak moss in here. In fact, it's listed on the box of the Guerlain packaging for Liu. It does state um, tree moss extract is in here. It... Um, it has the jasmine that we're so used to from Chanel number no. five as well. Um, but it has the Guerlinade vanilla at the base, together with what I still sense as sandalwood. There's a bit of patchouli in there. We got all of that in Chanel number no. five, too. Except they took out the real oak moss from Chanel number no. five. We got amber, woody notes, iris, vanilla, jasmine, rose, rosemary, bergamot, neroli, aldehydes. This thing is a powerhouse, okay? Now, released, and I already hear the legends and the myths begin. I don't want to pinpoint the date of its release, but somewhere between 1926 and 1929. I mean, they kind of state 1929, but there have been texts online referring to this one as second half of the 20s so let's say from 27 to 29 so for the sake of argument let's just say release date late 20s chanel number no. five in its pure perfume form and eau de toilette form not eau de parfum i'm just lifting it for whatever reason chanel number no. five the pure perfume and eau de toilette were released in 1921 so a couple of years before liu now, why does Liu smell like number five? Well, you could say, well, of course, it smells like number five because, you know, 
up until the moment when number five hit the world uh, and became the colossus that it hath become, Guerlain was the master perfumer. There were others, but Guerlain was very popular and famous. And of course, you know, Chanel number no. five kind of, sort of, um, dampened the parade in some ways to Guerlain. So you could imagine that Guerlain was a little bit upset that a portion of the market was being stolen by none other than Coco Chanel with number no. five. So, from here on out, two possible, maybe even more than two, but I'm going to reference two possible legends happen. One of them is, uh, states that Jacques, we're full of Jacques, we got Jacques Polge for Chanel in the 90s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, but we also have Jacques Guerlain for Guerlain, Jacques himself. His wife, allegedly, was caught by Jacques wearing number five. Blasphemy! How dare the wife of Jacques Guerlain wear a Chanel fragrance? She should only be wearing Guerlain fragrances. So, legend wants it that he got so upset that he made a number five version for his wife. Second legend wants it that the perfumers at Chanel had a little kind of bit of beef going down with the perfumers at Guerlain, saying, ah, we could copy Shalimar easy breezy. Guerlain people said, we can copy Chanel number no. five easy breezy. So legend wants it that they kind of came to this agreement and said, well, all righty then, whoever makes the best copy wins uh, and gets the chance to sell the dupe. Under a different name, of course. So, <laughs> guess who won? And guess who's still trying to copy Shalimar? Chanel, Le Lyon, anybody? The shade has been spilled. But um, back to Liu. So these are the two kind of most important legends surrounding Liu. The biggest, shadiest dupe, if you may, in, of history. But the funny thing is, is this really a dupe? Because... <laughs> Throughout history, this has been the perfume that kind of Guerlain never really defended much, spoke about much. I, it literally feels like this tiny little name almost disappearing in the center of the Guerlain uh, sticker. is almost like the embarrassment of it all. But ha were they really that embarrassed for this one? They would have discontinued it. I mean, hey... Uh, this one is almost a hundred years old too. It's still available. But they kept it in rotation. I wonder if part of that secret agreement, alleged secret agreement that they had, was maybe like connected to some legal terms. Like if you ever discontinue it, you can never bring it back again. Like you can keep producing it and selling it as long as you keep producing it from the first day. So I don't know, I'm just speculating here. Obviously all is alleged. But it's kind of weird. Why is this one still available? Why doesn't anybody talk about it? It's like the most hidden of Guerlain perfumes. I've been obsessed with this one for many years. Truth be told, on my channel, I always said when I, towards the beginnings of my channel, when you were asking me to review some Guerlain fragrances, I said, you know, the first Guerlain fragrance I would ever review would be Liu because of the Chanel story. But I didn't... Um, follow through with that promise because uh, I did review Shalimar before that and I reviewed Linston and uh, um, what's the name of the other one? <laughs> no, I don't even know. Uh, oh, somebody help me in the chat. The sandalwood one that nobody likes anymore because it's been so butchered. I reviewed the toilet and the eau de parfum, um, by the way. So, um, Oh my gosh, I hate when I forget a name. Anyway, somebody's going to tell me in the chats for sure. So, I've been reviewing several um, Guerlain fragrances and I haven't come to Liu. But I haven't come to Liu because Liu was, it was a special offering within their niche collection. And one of the big bee bottles with a pump sprayer. So it had a little extra hole in it. It evaporates, it leaks. It was all a big mess. It was too big and too expensive. And I was just like, I'm not going to commit to it. Because I don't like the bottle and I just want to be able to buy like smaller containers. By the way, now it's available as a 75 milliliter bottle. This is 75 ml, just like the Chanel 
uh, less exclusives bottles, except it costs way less, you know. Chanel exclusives bottles would be 185 uh, euro with the price increase for 75 ml. This one is 126 euro for 75 ml. So it's like 60 euro difference, but it's 60 euro better. Uh, Samsara, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. I'm, I'm brain dead. What can I tell you? I'm really bad with names. Yes, I reviewed Samsara, Eau de Parfum, and Eau de Toilette. So, um, and I reviewed Mitsuko. I mean, we've done some Guerlain reviews before getting to the one I wanted to review first and foremost, because this is one of the loves of my life. Liu really renders Chanel Number no. 5 in a very special way, in a very Guerlain way. But is it its own perfume? This is a good question, and it's a question that is very important to analyze. Why? Because, think about it this way. When these two were released in the 20s, and if it's true that this one, and I mean, you got to smell it and you know immediately that it smells of number five. So, but let's just say for alleged sake, if it's true that this one was supposed to be a dupe of this one, you would think that uh, they tried back in the 20s to formulate it to smell just like the formula of Chanel 5 from the 20s. Makes sense. But here's the twist that makes it so fascinating to me that a major perfume house like Guerlain that has all the resources it, it wants to create really good quality perfumes, and they do, going throughout the decades, now a hundred years later almost for this one, and they still keep producing it. Chanel, 100 years later, as we know, still keeps producing Chanel Number no. 5. Now what is happening? They have had 100 years of reformulations, of repackagings, because if you check out the original packaging of Liu, it's to die for. To die for. In the most sublime Art Deco, Art Nouveau, like a wooden lacquered box that opens up like this and inside is the bottle that has the shape of the outer container. I mean, just Google it, it's amazing. But anyway, packaging aside, it went through a lot of different packaging, a lot of different advertisements. Show number five did as well. The bottle didn't look like this at the beginning. We all know. Google it. Look it up, as they say. As they say. As that one woman would say. <laughs> anyway, so... um. What is fascinating to me is to analyze these two major perfume houses today and throughout the decades, throughout the hundred years, what happened to these two? Now, back in the 20s, they smelled the same or almost the same. But with the evolution and reformulations and IFRA regulations and all the new stuff a hundred years later, are these two still similar or have they veered more and more away from each other throughout the decades i mean it's a legitimate question because with time you know they reformulate these liquids these juices and like what where are we today where do we stand today can we say that these two are the same i mean or similar today like they were back then or was chanel number no. five better in the 20s than liu and is liu today better than chanel number no. five because Maybe the standards that Guerlain has for their perfumes is higher than the standards that Chanel has for its perfumes today. And by the way, I have been talking to uh, one of my sales associates at the beauty boutique, who shall remain anonymous because I protect my sources, obviously, uh, told me, yeah, they're watering down their perfumes. Chanel is really very greedy, very focused on money. And as of late, they just keep watering them down. This is from coming from a Chanel sales associate, who has been working with them for a long time, many years, who, who smells them on a regular basis, who is noticing that things are changing for the worst while prices are going up. Well, that's not the case with Guerlain. And I can tell you why. Because to answer quickly the question of whether or not these two still smell similar, yes, they do. This is an equivocably Chanel number no. 5. I wore it, coincidentally, today to the beauty boutique because I had some business to do there. I doused myself in Liu. I went into the boutique. I was talking to my sales associate and I said, by the way, smell this. Let me spray some more. This is so delicious. And I kid you not. My sales associate said, oh, did you hunt down a vintage version of Chanel number no. five? The shade. 
And I said, no, my dear, this is the current formulation of Liu by Guerlain. Like it? She's like, oh my God, this is amazing. It smells better than Chanel Number no. 5. I was like, yes, it does, actually. Current Chanel Number no. 5, Eau de Parfum. I'm not talking about the pure perfume. Leave alone the pure perfume of Chanel Number no. 5 for a second. We're going to get to it. This one could obviously also be better. This one could be also less synthetic. I mean, you know, we are in 2021, so things have to get synthesized in some way, shape, or form. But it doesn't matter for the fact that it is synthetic. It still smells so much deeper and more corpulent, full, robust, and aldehydically mesmerizing with the majestic Guerlinade vanilla at the base. It, it, just, it just smells more connected to the 20s, but rendered for 2021 than Chanel No. 5 does today. Now, this has its pros and its cons. This one has a very, very powerful historic smell. It, it, ha it contextualizes a smell within that particular decade of the 20s. And it, for me, that's a plus. But I can see how some people might see that as a minus. Because Chanel Number no. 5 has been reformulated to go with the flow, to go with the times. They want to make it younger. And this is also one of the reasons why they keep watering it down. Because, you know, the shallow youth of today, so Chanel thinks, because the youth of today ain't shallow. It's just that the marketing idiots who think they're genius is sitting on top of that freaking empire of mirrors like Don Quixote. They are the ones who think that the youth is shallow. So let's water down these waterlets because let's make it more actual. And I think there's a big mistake happening there. Chanel number no. five, um, eau de parfum. They're trying to strip it of its 80s shoulder pads because this one was released in the 80s. And I am comparing the two because these are two eau de parfum concentrations. That's the only reason. And I leave the Chanel number no. five eau de toilette outside of this equation because it's a totally different smelling perfume. Like this one smells of this. Actually, now we get to the pure perfume. This one smells like a phase, like um, a level between the Eau de Parfum and the Pure Parfum. So at times this one smells just like the Pure Perfume of number five. It's just that majestic. And at times it's weaker than Chanel number no. five, the Pure Perfume. But it is kind of the missing link between the pure perfume and the eau de parfum in its current state. So it's much more noble than the eau de parfum. Uh, but of course, it's not as pure in its May rose and, and jasmine as would be the pure perfume of Chanel Number no. 5. But however, it's that Guerlain masterfulness, that Guerlain DNA that makes this perfume so wonderful. I mean, this is literally... And this is why I respect this one so much. This is, a, this is the perfect example of how Guerlain would do Chanel if Guerlain got to become, got to become, <laughs> were to become. Now, we know that we know that <laughs> there is no more Guerlain. They sold the house. There is no Guerlain progeny, uh, perfumer knows that would make a perfume. That, that, or maybe there is. Not that I know of. Um, so uh, Thierry Vassa is the perfumer for Guerlain. So, I mean, you know, you know what I mean? But I'm talking about the Guerlain family. Like, if Guerlain would to take, were to take over Chanel, this gives us a hint. It's the missing link. This perfume, Liu, gives us a hint at how Guerlain would manage the house of Chanel. And just for that reason alone, this perfume is worth the purchase because it offers a very special insight behind the curtain of how things would how things would look like in a parallel universe. Very Twin Peaks, very David Lynch. In a parallel universe where Guerlain were to have been the owners of Chanel perfumes or were to have created Chanel perfumes. The interpretation of Guerlain of Chanel perfumes, the decoding Basically, for those of you who follow fashion, I'm sorry for you if you do, but for those of you who do, who still haven't figured it out that fashion is freaking dead, 
And for those of you who have watched that disgusting Gucci with Balenciaga crossover, cross-pollination, cross-cloning collection, the, the sadness of it all that's coming out, I promised you shade in this video and shade hath been delivered. For those of you who have seen that cross-pollination of two disgusting things in one, that cross-pollination happened in the 20s already, but in a good way, in a good way. This is a Chanel perfume wearing Guerlain clothes, which is a paradox because Guerlain made perfumes, Chanel made clothes. So it should be Chanel clothes wearing a Guerlain perfume. But no, we got the twist. Here we get the twist. Here we get Guerlain uh, perfume wearing Chanel clothes. Uh, sorry, Guerlain clothes wearing a Chanel perfume because the outfit is Guerlain with this pillar, this kind of Greek motif pillar but the liquid is Chanel, but it has Guerlain DNA. And this alone, for me, makes me dream. The possibilities are endless. I fantasize about how Guerlain would do Chanel number 22. This one has hay in it, like a leathery skankiness in it. It's delicious. And of course, immediately makes me think, how would Guerlain do Queer de Russie? Mind-boggling. It also makes me, you know, think, how would have Guerlain done Gardenia, Bois des Îles? Just to name those, you know, classics. But even more so, how would Guerlain do Egoist? How would Guerlain render Anteus? How would Guerlain envision allure. I could imagine allure, which is beautiful the way it is. Obviously, they all are beautiful the way they are, even in their watered-down states. But just envisioning them through the lens of Liu, because this gives us a hint, an olfactive hint at how these other perfumes would smell. I think they would be delicious. Same applies to what Olivier Polge did with Le Lion de Chanel, which is a very Shalimar. It gives us a hint at how Chanel would do Guerlain. For now, I prefer the vision of how Guerlain would do Chanel than the other way around, because this is just so beautiful. It, it's just that beautiful. Now, what I'm going to do, let me just spray it freshly on. And I'm going to add a layer of Chanel number five. And I've let this one age for 10 years almost. You can see how dark the liquid is. It would be a much lighter if it were a fresh batch. So I'm giving this one even more. I'm giving it even more benefit of the doubt. I'm like, hey, I let you age 10 years. I let you get darker and more intense with smell because the current formulation is very bland. A lot of you have been telling me that it is. Um, oh. Child, this is good. Now, these two babies on top of each other. Crystals, 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 crystals. Now, yo, we know that Ernest Bo envisioned snowy landscapes and frost when he was envisioning Chanel number no. five. And the aldehydes do render that freezing sparkle. This one adds even more because the aldehydes in this one are even more crystalline than the ones in Chanel, because when Guerlain does aldehy aldehydes, they do aldehydes. They do aldehydes that cut you like a knife. So them together, uh, oof, this is good. They play together. It's like, it's like, you know, two cousins, you know. A brother and a sister had their own kids, and then the cousins grow up together. They you see that they belong to the same family. They're not brother and sister. They belong to the same family, and they blend and they merge very well together. And uh, the smell is... Uh, it's divine. It's divine. They don't clash. They don't fight. It's not a rocky relationship. You really feel and smell the harmony. And this is what... You know, I, I went to purchase this perfume out of shade because I was like, I'm not going to spend money on the Chanel 100th year anniversary collection. I'm really angry about it with it. I mean, there are a couple of pieces that I wanted, but for reasons that I'm going to explain in another video. 
And I, I wanted this. I was like, no, I'm going to give my 100 year anniversary money to Guerlain, not to Chanel. But then instead of that anger, I got to another conclusion. And that conclusion is actually buying this perfume gave me hope because all of these brands fight against each other and either copy each other or sue each other or the this or the that who's better than who. And it's kind of really sad to see them do that. But this kind of gave me hope that actually there's a when things work well together, they can, oh boy, you can create magic. Now, Gucci and Balenciaga created shit. These two together create magic. Um, really magic. Guerlain and Chanel, unite your forces because God knows Chanel needs it more than ever. Uh, Guerlain maybe doesn't really need it, but Guerlain, since they sold their themselves off to another company, they needed two, and I think uh, merging them two would be, of course, a dream come true, but it's never going to happen. But smelling these two layered on top of each other shows me that it is possible, that beautiful things can happen when they're done in the right way, when they're done with respect, with love. Whether or not this was done with love or respect, it's irrelevant. The result is beautiful. And even though almost 100 years have passed for this one, and 100 years have passed for this one, they have not veered away from each other that far. In a hundred years, they're still rolling around, quite parallel to each other, battling their way through eternity. Of course, Liu, unfortunately, did not receive um, the advertisement that Chanel Number no. 5 has. This, this one is forgotten by many, by most. Most people don't even know about Liu. Many people that know about Guerlain perfumes don't even know about Liu. So, this one is never going to shine as Number 5. But if you do give it a chance, this one will open up certain doors that you would have never thought possible from number five. And all of a sudden, you're going to discover facets of number five through Liu. And even though this one came later, you're still going to discover facets of Liu through Chanel number five. Why? Because the House of Chanel had also decades and decades of time to analyze Liu. This one came first, but as it was... You know, as the years and decades progressed, you best believe Chanel was sniffing what was going down with Guerlain as well. So they would take note from this one as well. So at a certain point in time, I think it's like with Dallas and Dynasty, the two TV shows. Dallas came first. It was super popular. Then Dynasty came later. Nobody watched it. But then Dynasty started copying Dallas because at the beginning, Dynasty was a copy of Dallas. And it was kind of gaining traction. At one point, Valentino started dressing Alexis Carrington, and the fashion became huge and bigger in Dynasty. And all of a sudden, Dynasty, which was a dupe of Dallas, Dynasty surpassed Dallas, even though it was copying Dallas at the beginning. And all of a sudden, the games twisted. Dallas started copying Dynasty, because Dynasty was bigger than Dallas. A similar thing happens with Liu. Of course, Liu is not as popular as, as Chanel number no. 5, so... But I do believe that at a certain point in time, Chanel perfumers did look at Liu and took notes about how to tweak number no. 5, maybe. To adapt it a little bit. This is all alleged, this is just speculation, but smell it. You be the judge, you tell me what you think, because... It's as if they're kind of looking at each other throughout the decades and kind of always kind of taking a little bit of notes from each other, you know? Uh, so it is highly possible that our Dallas and our Dynasty played out just like the TV show. This one came first, was more popular. This one came second. This one never became more popular. But at a certain point, of course, this one came and looked at him or her. And then this one is like a couple of decades later started looking at him or her or it or them uh, for inspiration. So I, I do not believe we can merge the two. I think they have grown together like a symbiotic relationship. Like one of my favorite horror movies from the 80s, um, Basket Case. Now, if you haven't seen Basket Case, it's one of the most beautiful depictions of New York in the 80s. It was filmed on location, very low budget. The uh, parasitic, as they call him, but it's just a Siamese twin, a Belial. Um, well, I'm not going to spoil the movie for you. You should watch the movie. But what I want to say is this is kind of that depiction. To me, this is Belial attached to his brother, Siamese twins. 
And as much as you try to separate them, and as much as you try to dig this one in the dirt, forget about it, not talk about it, never say it existed, it's always going to find its way up, and it's going to attach itself again back to, to its uh, sibling. In fact, the truth is that they're inseparable to me. They are the Siamese twins. One of them, the unlucky one that nobody ever spoke about, one of them became the famous one, sucking all the energy out of this one, but they belong together. Give it a go and let me know. Little rhyme. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. Let me get to the chats. Factor Story says, I definitely have more Guerlain fragrances than Chanel. Jack says, I think Liu will exist on my Chanel shelf. Oh, for sure. It's a, it's a Chanel perfume with a Guerlain heart. Mr. Philip Faber says, Girl, Dynasty in Dallas, Liu and number five. Cha, I'm telling you, it's a cat fight. <laughs> Jesus says, The original 1929 bottle design for Liu was a gorgeous rectangular bottle and it came in a wooden box. Yes. Bibi, let's make it shine. I'm looking to get ever uh, to get ever since you put it on my radar. Liu. Oh, and and you guys layering these two. Because it's like this gives to Chanel number no. five what it's missing. And Chanel number no. five gives to Liu what it's missing. These are Siamese twins, you guys. Jerry says, is the current Louis worth getting? I don't know. The current Liu is worth getting. Mr. Philip Alves, my first attempt to make a perfume resulted in Shalimar dupe. Chanel, give me a call. I can give you the recipe for it. <laughs> Red Frag says, I will try number five extrait with my beloved Liu. I am one of the few people on the planet that does not like Shalimar, says Red Frag. Jerry says, Jacob is selling this to me. I'm totally getting it now. <laughs> it... You guys, it's amazing. It's an amazing perfume. Leslie says, I love Nahima, Guerlain Signature Fragrance, putting it on right now. Maximo CG says, another perfume added to my wish list, lol. Helen French says, no, definitely released in 1929. Megan says, what's impressive is how Guerlain uses perfume in their makeup. I also love how Chanel uses perfume in its makeup, but that's a whole other story. Uh, Audrey says, I'm really, uh, I really got, I've really gotten into Guerlain this year. Jam says, I wonder how Guerlain would do Platinum Egoist. Oh, it would make it less metallic and warmer and it would be delicious. Mr. Philip Faber says, Guerlain doing Chanel. No pun intended. Red Frag says, I own more Guerlain, a more Guerlain perfume than any other designer. Madame Marie brings me stuff from France. I'm very lucky. And broke, says Red Frag. Olfactive Story says, I could see Guerlain do Anteus. Ooh, Olfactive. Me too. I think a Guerlain Anteus would be to die for because it would, it would be less dry. It would have less of that arrogance that Chanel gives the per. You know, it would give it more depth and warmth. Oh, it would be to die for. Mr. Philip Faber says, Guerlain would douse everything in vanilla but the good vanilla. Jesus says, my favorite Guerlain is vintage Samsara Extrait. Oh, wow, what a thought. Guerlain doing Chanel, says Aisha. Oli Soto says, fan fiction. Oh, totally fan fiction. A Chanel perfume wearing Guerlain's clothes. Yeah. And vice versa. Guerlain has a much longer perfume history and heritage than Chanel, though. Of course, Jesus. Yes, I mentioned that at the beginning of the video. It's, it began there. I mean, they were really huge until Chanel 5 took kind of the shine away from them. Jerry says, it was a joke. They, oh, there was a joke. Chanel for Guerlain collab. Uh, VJ Love says, I heard... I don't get that one. Oh, is it just a joke? Okay. So, um, they said that the inspiration behind Liu is a Puccini opera character in, in, in medieval China. Yes, we were talking about that before. Uh, and we're talking about how ditzy Liu was particularly due to the ending of Liu. But you see, I didn't want to touch base on the history of Liu like I touched base on Mitsuko, uh, the book, because 
this is Chanel number five. This, I didn't want to go into the history of Liu, of the character, like I did with Mitsuko, because Mitsuko is its own, create everything else copies Mitsuko. But this here, it, it's all, it almost feels like Liu, the story was utilized to kind of justify this perfume, so it was unnecessary for me. Um, my focal point is the Chanel number no. five in Liu and the Liu in today's Chanel number no. five. Because the Eau de Parfum of Chanel number no. five came out in the 80s, decades after Liu, and it's very similar to Liu. So, you know what I mean? It's like Dallas and Dynasty. Who's copying who? Mr. Philip Abel says, poor Mr. Guerlain, his wife cheated on him with none other than Mademoiselle Coco. And with that, let's end it here. Thumb up this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Follow me on um, all my other channels. Uh, the main channel, Super Dacob, essentially a Dacob, my perfume channel. Uh, and of course, Totally Dacob, my pop culture channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Super Dacob, all spelled together. Follow me also on my Chanel Instagram profiles. One is called Coco Chanel is in my house, dedicated to my Chanel collection. And the other one is called Coco Chanel Privé, dedicated to the life of Coco Chanel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.